How different would your life look right now if you had, say, 100 extra dollars of passive income flowing into your bank account every day without doing any extra work? Well, I'm gonna show you four ways that you can start earning easy passive income starting today. And with all four of these ways, we'll go over how you can get started, as well as some real life examples that you can implement for yourself immediately. Hey, really quick, you guys, you know the drill. There's an Easter egg hidden in the video. First person to find it and comment what it is down below, you'll get your comment permanently pinned on the video. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, so the first easy way to earn $100 per day in passive income is by investing in Dividend Kings. Dividend King is a stock that has increased its dividend every year for at least 50 or more consecutive years. A few examples of Dividend Kings include Coca-Cola, 3M, Procter & Gamble, Lowe's, and Target. And at the time of this recording, there are only 39 stocks that carry this exclusive title of being a Dividend King. Okay, so let's break down how exactly you can start investing in Dividend Kings to start earning passive income. So first things first, you need a brokerage account, okay? This is gonna be the only way that you can actually go in and buy and sell these Dividend King stocks. If you don't have one, then I recommend you watch this video here after you finish watching this one, of course, where I walk you through step-by-step -step how to open up a Roth IRA investment account and start investing. Anyways, the next step is to head over to dividend.com and then hover over the word guide up here on the menu. And then down here under Dividend Growers, you're gonna click on Dividend Kings. This will show you a full list of all the Dividend King stocks, including details such as the dividend yield, how long they've been increasing their dividend, their returns and things like that. What I want you to do though is actually click on this column right here that says yield and div or dividend. This will automatically sort the dividend stocks by their dividend yield. And so now we can see which of these dividend stocks pay the highest dividend yield, which of course will help you to earn more passive income. Now, just a really quick side note, something for you to keep in mind is that a higher dividend yield is not always a good thing. In fact, higher dividend yields with stocks and ETFs can actually be a sign of weakness, something that you should avoid. But I've done my research and I know that in the case of most dividend king stocks, higher dividend yields don't necessarily correlate to something bad. And so, for example, the highest yielding dividend king is Universal Corp, which currently has a dividend yield of 5.39%. And what's cool about this website is that directly underneath the dividend yield, it'll actually show you the annual dividend. And so, for example, with Universal, we can see that this stock pays a annual dividend of $3.12, 3M pays $5.96, AbbVie pays $5.64, and so on. Okay, so all that's fine, but how do we actually determine what you need to invest in and how much to invest to actually start earning that $100 per day in passive income? Well, let's use Universal Corp as our example. Let's say that you wanted to invest in Universal Corp to take advantage of that high dividend yield. We know that Universal Corp pays an annual dividend of $3.12. What you would wanna do first is actually calculate how much money you would need to earn per year in dividends in order to start earning $100 per day in passive income. And so that math is easy. Simply multiply 100 by 365, which is how many days there are in a year, and that'll give us $36,500. Perfect. And so now we take this number, this 36,500, and we divide it by Universal Corp's annual dividend of $3.12, which gives us 11,698. What exactly is that number? That's the number of shares of Universal Corp stock you would need to own in order to be paid $100 per day in passive income. And to figure out how much money you would need to invest to start earning $100 per day in passive income, simply multiply 11,698 by the current price of the stock, which is currently $57.85. This gives you $676,729, which is how much you would need to invest in Universal Corp to start earning $100 in passive income per day. Now, before you immediately get give up and say this is impossible. I can't afford that many shares of this stock, let alone any stock. Just hear me out. When it comes to passive income, I want you to think about it like this spectrum here. On one side of the spectrum is time and on the opposite side is money. You can either earn passive income fast by essentially buying your way there, or you could build up your passive income slowly using your time if you don't have enough money to buy your way there. And so in the case of earning passive income through dividend stocks, for most people, this will fall closer to the time part of the spectrum. Since most people don't have just $600,000 sitting in the bank waiting to invest, you have to slowly work your way up to that using Using your time. But don't worry because I promise some of the other passive income ideas will cost you significantly less than $600,000 and can still earn you $100 per day in passive income. But in the case of investing in dividend kings and specifically Universal Corp, this is how much it's going to cost you. But something else to keep in mind is that you really don't want to invest all of your money into just one single stock. And so in the case of investing in dividend king stocks, you have a couple of different options. The first option is to simply invest in dozens of different dividend king stocks. Doing this 
this will give your portfolio more diversification, which will help protect you from various risks such as market volatility. And so in this example, I've got this sample portfolio on M1 Finance where I'm investing in 20 different Dividend King stocks, all of them equally weighted by 5% of the portfolio. This will give me much more diversification than just investing in one single stock, but will also ensure that I'm maximizing my passive income potential. The second option is that you could invest in a Dividend Aristocrat ETF, which is actually my preferred way of investing in dividend stocks for passive income. Now, a Dividend Aristocrat is a dividend stock within the S&P 500 that has increased dividends every year for at least 25 or more consecutive years. And there's actually a few different Dividend Aristocrat ETFs that you can choose from. As you can see on this list, some of the best Dividend Aristocrat ETFs include SDY or the Spider S&P 500 Dividend ETF and NOBL or the ProShares S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF. You could also get away with investing in some other dividend ETFs like SCHD, VYM, and VIG. Although these aren't exclusively dividend aristocrat ETFs, they still offer great dividend yields and overall performance. Now, the great thing about investing in dividend ETFs over dividend stocks is that dividend ETFs provide you with diversification by giving you exposure to hundreds of different stocks all within one single ETF. The only other way to get that type of exposure with stocks is by investing in hundreds of individual stocks, which will cost you significantly more time and money. But the advantage of investing in individual stocks is that you will have more control over which stocks you want to invest in by weight, something that you don't have any control over with an ETF. The next easy way to earn $100 per day in passive income is by investing in REITs. A REIT or a real estate investment trust is a company that owns or finances income producing real estate. The cool thing about REITs is that by law, they're required to pay at least 90% of their taxable income to shareholders in the form of dividends. And so investing your money into REITs is another really great way to earn passive income. Plus getting started is very easy. Once again, we're going to head over to dividend.com hover on the word guide up here and then click on where it says REIT. From this list here, you'll see hundreds of different REITs all filtered by market cap. These top dozen or so here on this list will be some of the best REITs to invest in to build your passive income. And so just as an example here, I'm just gonna choose one of these REITs at random and let's just go with Simon Property Group. And so very similar to the dividend stocks, what I wanna do is figure out how many shares of this REIT I need to invest in to earn that $100 per day in passive income. And so once again, doing some fast math, if you recall from earlier, we would need to earn about $36,500 per year or about $3,000 per month in order to meet that $100 per day goal. And so we'll take that $36,500 and we'll divide it by the annual dividend of this REIT, which is $6.60. This gives us 5,455, which is how many shares of the REIT we would need to invest in to meet our goal. And so to figure out how much money we would need to invest, simply multiply the number of shares by the current price of the REIT, which is $118. This gives us roughly $643,000, which is how much money you would need to invest into this REIT to start earning that $100 per day passive income. Now, once again, building passive income is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And for most people, in the cases of number one and two on this list, you will need to sacrifice a lot more of your time in order to build up that passive income. But these next two will be very different. Now, in terms of how to actually buy the REIT, simply head over to your favorite broker. In this example, I'm just using M1 Finance because I really like the way their interface looks. But simply search for the REIT within your broker and the same exact way that you would buy a stock or an ETF is how you're gonna buy the REIT. Now, if you wanted to, you could diversify your holdings by investing in multiple REITs, or you could just invest in an ETF like VNQ or the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, which invests in over 164 REITs all within one single ETF. The next easy way to earn passive income is by investing in real estate. Yes actual physical real estate. Investing into rental real estate and earning passive income from your tenants paying rent falls on the opposite end of the spectrum from stocks and REITs. You see, because earning $100 per day in passive income by investing in stocks and REITs requires a substantial investment of over half a million dollars. This will take you years of investing and compounding to reach. And while that's totally fine, some of you may want to reach that much faster. And with real estate, that $100 per day goal can be reached substantially faster thanks to the power of leverage. Leverage in real estate is the ability to to use other people's money to buy your own assets. And so instead of having to invest $600,000 or more to start earning $100 per day in passive income, you can invest twenty dollars to $40,000 and get the same results with much less money. And so exactly whose money are you leveraging? Well, 
anybody who's willing to lend it. Your Uncle Bob, Grandma Susie, or the Mafia. But most likely, it'll just be the bank. You'll leverage money from the bank using a mortgage. A mortgage is a type of loan used to buy real estate, and typically, most banks will happily lend you a few hundred thousand dollars to go and buy a property if a few conditions are met. In order to qualify for a mortgage at most banks, you'll need the following. Income. Obviously, the bank needs to see that you're earning money somehow. Because even though this is technically an investment property, in the case that you don't have a tenant in your property for a month or two and you have to cover the rent yourself, the lender needs to see that you'd be able to cover that mortgage with a reliable source of income. You'll also need a decent credit score. Now, what your credit score needs to be varies widely depending on the lender and the type of mortgage. But typically, the less you put down on a mortgage, the higher your credit score has to be. And so, just as an example, if you were putting down 15% on the mortgage, then your credit score would probably have to be around a 680. If you were putting down, say, 25%, then your credit score could be as low as a 620. Now, I'm just giving rough examples because these numbers will vary depending on the lender. But the most important thing to understand is that you don't need a perfect 800 credit score to be approved for a mortgage. The next thing that you'll need is money for a down payment. Now, again, this percentage will vary from lender to lender, but typically most lenders, especially on investment properties, like to see you put down anywhere from 15 to 25%. And so if you live in any state minus New York and California, you may only need between 20 and $40,000 down or potentially even less than that, depending on the price of the property. The lender will also check your debt to income ratio. The debt to income ratio, or DTI for short, tells lenders how much of your gross monthly income goes toward bills each month. Generally speaking, you'll need to have a DTI ratio of less than 50% to qualify for most mortgages. And here's how you calculate your DTI ratio. Go to Google and type in DTI calculator and click on any of the top links. I'll click on the Wells Fargo link, okay? And so from here, you'll see two different fields. The first one is your annual income, and the second one is your monthly expenses. For this example, I'm just gonna use the median US average income, which is $51,480. Next, you'll need to enter your monthly expenses. This includes things like your rent, if you have a car payment, student loans, things that you have to pay on a regular basis. However, you don't have to include certain living expenses, such as your utility bill, food bill, entertainment expenses. Expenses like that don't actually have to be included inside of this number. And so let's just say as an example that your monthly expenses are $2,000 per month. This means that you have a DTI ratio of 47%, which can be improved, but it's still good. Now, the lower your DTI ratio, the better. But typically, most lenders like to see it below a 50%. And so these lists of things are gonna be the primary things that you need to focus on if you wanna secure a mortgage. And fortunately, you do have control over most of the items on this list. Your credit score, your DTI ratio, your down payment. These are all different things that you have full control over. And so you could work on increasing your credit score by paying down balances, keeping your credit utilization low, and making on-time payments. You could decrease your DTI ratio by cutting back expenses, downsizing, or taking up a side hustle, which will help to increase your income and lower your debt to income ratio. And you can increase your down payment by saving more of your money from each paycheck. If you can do all this, you'd be really surprised with how quickly you'd be able to go and buy your first rental property. And in terms of actually buying the real estate, simply use websites like Zillow and Redfin to search for real estate in your local area. Now, although really good real estate deals can be found in other ways, such as finding for sale by owner properties or buying from wholesalers, websites like Zillow make it super easy to find offers and contact agents directly. And then when it comes time to actually renting out your property and managing it, well, the good news is that you don't actually have to manage it yourself if you don't want. You can just keep this entire process as passive as possible by hiring a property management company to manage everything for you. A property management company will take care of literally everything for you. Finding tenants, collecting rent, calling a plumber to fix the broken toilet, you name it, most property management companies will take care of all that stuff for you. And typically, most property management companies will only only charge between 8 and 10% of the monthly rent to manage the property for you. And so, for example, if your monthly rent payment on your property was, for example, $1,000, the property management company would only charge between $80 and $100 per month to manage that property for you. But this leaves you with 90% or more of the rent each month that you can then use to either pay the mortgage and save the rest of it for another rental property or some other type of investment. And the last easy way to earn $100 per day in passive income is by renting on Airbnb. And this one falls furthest to the right on the spectrum. In fact, it almost doesn't even belong on the spectrum at all because if it's done right, you don't need a lot of money and it doesn't take a lot of time. For example, you could in theory rent out existing rooms or spaces in your house that you already rent or own. This is also known as house hacking and it could also be applied to rental properties. It's not uncommon at all for people to go and convert garages and basements into actual living spaces that they can then use to rent out on Airbnb. It's also not uncommon practice to rent out individual spare bedrooms
bedrooms. If there's a bedroom or a certain space in your house that you're not using, you can easily rent that out and earn 100 plus per night by doing it. And the crazy thing is that you don't actually have to even own the place where you live to do this. Depending on the rules set by your landlord, you could potentially sublease spare bedrooms or spaces in your house that you're renting. The apartment complex that I lived in before buying my home actually allowed sublease. And so we actually did have a spare bedroom that we were considering renting out. And they were totally okay with letting their tenants sublease spaces or even the entire apartment. So I'm on Airbnb's website right now. And even where I live in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, it's definitely not a small town, but it's also not a huge city. But as you can see, single private rooms are renting for well over a hundred dollars. I mean, we have some here, 150, 200. And so when you talk about making $100 per day in passive income, I mean, this is something that you could literally start doing almost immediately. Now, also, just as a really quick side note, this won't affect most of you, but you also want to check your local area to make sure there's not any laws and regulations against renting out Airbnbs. There's actually a website, which I'll link down below, that's super helpful. It's called Build Your BNB. And you can search your city on this website to find some useful information about the average nightly rates. But even more importantly, you can check to see if there's any specific city ordinances or regulations against renting short-term Airbnb spaces. If your city allows Airbnbs without any restrictions, you'll definitely know because on this website under regulations, it'll either say positive or neutral. And what you'll find is that most cities have no regulations against Airbnb. And if they do have certain regulations, then it's really small stuff like not being able to rent out your property on July 4th. Now, perhaps you wanna earn much more than just $100 per day in passive income, and you're willing to do a little bit more work to get there. In that case, you should definitely watch that video next where I'll show you how you can start earning passive income with as little as $1,000. You guys are amazing and I will see you again very soon. Take care.